Thank you very much, Idris. Uh, it's really sounded as a manifesto for from the beginning till the end, especially the poetry. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I mean, so amazing presentations. I love all of them. And I think they're in some way or another, they're really like uh, connected or building some bridges uh, between, uh, between each other. And uh, we open for uh, discussions and questions. And uh, maybe you guys want to, to ask questions uh, of each other. And uh, uh, we will also uh, might have some questions from the uh, from the chat. Uh, I don't see any questions though. But uh, anyways, uh, anyone have any questions? I have a question. <clears throat> um, I think this is also something we were discussing with you, Anna, when we were thinking about planning this panel and we today we're talking a lot about uh suppression of voters but we didn't really touch upon the um, the topic of suppression of candidates which i think is also very important especially in um in in case of russia and belarus and um, um also we're talking a lot about where all the uh, where have all the good candidates gone you know because we we often are put in the situation when we have to choose between evil and, and less evil. So, and if we're talking about democracy and elections and representations and inclusion, we should also consider the theme of who are we electing? Not that only we are allowed to vote and be present through our political, um, through expression of our polit political will, but um, who do we trust and who do we see in, in this kind of shared future? And my question is probably to, to Greg about um, how do we kind of um, reimagine the political candidates and um, what are, and maybe not only to him, but also to all of you guys, how do we kind of redesign and remix the candidate? Uh, well, that's actually what every, everyone's been thinking about uh, for the last decade. Uh, because this is uh, exactly the period that uh, uh, we used to call the, the surge of populism. Uh, well, uh, many people believe that populism is the way to, to abuse democracy uh, or the way to, uh, to distort democracy or even perhaps demolish it. But uh, I think it would be fair to say that, well, actually, populism emerges out of, uh, out of deficit of democracy, uh, out, of, uh, out of this uh, very long protracted technocratic rule uh, where the politicians uh, we are seeing on the ballot, we are seeing on the TV, are basically not that different from each other. Uh, so for that reason, I think uh, it is it is it is fair to say that the, these people don't sim simply don't represent the real cleavages that are there in society. They don't really represent the issues uh, that the people are worried about. Uh, and populism is probably a way to inject uh, some uh, some energy uh, into this uh, into this liberal democratic mechanism. Uh, by making uh, the issues that people are really worried about uh, more uh, more tangible, uh, by making uh, them uh, seen, and I think that uh, well, basically uh, this range of populist leaders that we have uh, witnessed recently, uh, it is a reflection of this uh, of this demand for. Uh, not, not simply for strong political leadership, but also for those who wouldn't be uh, shy to uh, represent, to reflect uh, the, the real issues that are out there. Uh, well, probably they don't deliver, but still uh, we can see that they're trying at least to answer this, this growing demand. It's growing everywhere uh, in, in countries of uh, liberal democracy from the United States to Russia, 
uh, and from uh, from the United Kingdom to Turkey. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly say too that um, you know, as you when you said populism, it made me think of that. That I think there's a disconnect where people people actually think that's what Trump um, was that he was that he was this sort of Jimmy uh, Jimmy Stewart like Frank Capra character, this ordinary guy who's going to go to White House and clean it up. But really, what he actually is is a failed insider. Uh, that that he you know he's he's somehow like you you can't all you can't be like a millionaire billionaire and kind of like project that monopoly uh, uh, park place idea and also try to be like you know, gee golly gosh, uh, folksy guy. And so uh, I, th but, but I do think um, to this thing about populism, it, it has it had me thinking about, uh, I feel like we, and, and I'm gonna say it's gonna sound lofty, but I, I think it's our, kind of our only hope is that we have got to get money out of politics. Like the fact that like, even, even people I want to succeed, I'm like constantly having to donate to them and all this kind of stuff. Like th there needs to be a cap there needs to be a cap on salaries. There needs to be a cap on uh, how much they can raise, and and we just have to to approach it a, a, a whole way. Because because if because if if a if a senator or a president was making what a public school teacher made, you would see very different kinds of of people running. Um, and so I think that that the fact that it is so entrenched and there's so much money involved, it 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 immediately creates such a wedge between like it's impossible to actually be, you know, a populist, you know. Truly, when you have to raise so much money, so much volumes of cash to even get in the office, it only invites uh, certain levels of corruption and, and, and bias and exclusion of those without means. Like by its very framework and nature, it, it cannot, it, it's, it's, it invites corruption, you know? So um, that, that's sort of my big lofty dream is, is that that is the kind of remixing is just let's completely rethink what a politician and like let's actually just stop calling them politicians like these are just policymakers and advocates and community you know when everyone called obama when they said you know community organizers this dirty word i was like what what's wrong with that like that's what he's doing that's what that's what they do right like that's what they do all these nuts driving around with the trucks and the flags i mean that's a community believe it or not i mean it's a scary one but that's a community right so anyway i'm rambling but you know what i'm saying I wanted to add a little bit to, too from my perspective, and that is, is I think the, uh, around the country uh, today, there are a lot of uh, localities and states that are voting on different configurations. And I know that citizens in the United States are gonna have a big discussion about how the electoral college works. I think people are gonna be looking at the issue of uh, the, the census and new maps uh, that are done every 10 years in the United States. And just the idea that the United States as a democracy, what, whatever that may be, uh, is, a, is an infant in world politics. I mean, the Iroquois Confederacy was perhaps a thousand years or more. And we see governments that, who've lasted long times. The United States being 200 years old is still an infant in terms of operating and still guiding its thing. So some of these uh, initiatives at the local level. I, I, I agree, we need more uh, human beings and, and, and people like grandmothers and, and wives and people of color uh, rather than politicians and, and the money needs to get out of the, the process because it's really holding back proper representation. But some of these new configurations like rank choice voting, which allows you to uh, cast several votes and find a plurality and a consensus are probably positive initi initiatives, just like some of the states who are already have been doing uh, uh, absentee early balloting for years and doing it very successfully. So I'm encouraged by some of the uh, referendums that are on the ballot. Um, I have a question to Tale about the, uh, um, I mean, unfortunately I haven't been interacting with your, uh, uh, with any of your works, but I'm just curious about the uh, participants and reactions of uh, those people that are being part of your performances. Is there which which one are you are you talking about the teleprompter? Yes. Um, so I think that I mean 
it really depends. As I was saying, there's something about, there's something very tempting about the work. Like you're not exactly sure even what you're stepping into initially. And you're, as you're kind of participating, you have this moment of, wait, what am I actually saying? What do I actually know about this? Should I stay or should I go? And there's something that I think I, as someone who was in those setting and filming in those spaces, I, I kind of wanted to, to translate what this, you know, emotional, uh, roller coaster of speaking about politics, but speaking about the end time, like kind of what happens through that process of manipulation. So, or, or you know, even just like for for someone who is from a completely political, a different political spectrum, is just like being open to to having that influence me. And I wanted to to think about what choice you have if when you're standing there and what choices you're making, and if are you are you playing along or are you leaving, and when and people usually I mean it's something about this kind of re-performing that happens about because there are people who change the words there are people who stay there have been mothers who have completely changed the speeches um there are people who just left or there are people who stayed and overacted them so um I think it's it's a work that in some ways what I did learn like when when I showed it in the U.S. at iBeam um I think there's something in this work that stays in the body and I was and I always said that if I'm going to sh and and it also demands a lot of contextualization and public programming which is something i i also do i invite different people to activate the work so because it does register different in different bodies and i think that what happens is that i think it ha you have to have a feedback almost i felt like if i was to ever show this again there's going to be a feedback process um and i do have to also be very honest that i've always shown this work in very liberal settings so it would be interesting to see how this work functions in other settings and like what would that do would it just um you know amplify something or would it undo something would it I, it's a work with a lot of questions and i was also made you know when when i started working on it no one really thought trump would be elected and i i came from a place that i've already experienced this kind of rhetoric of fear and mongering hate towards the Arab uh, citizens who are who were uh, about to vote before the elections. And I kind of felt like what happens if we take almost kind of thinking about populism from a leftist perspective, I was like, what if we take this energy? What if we take these questions and we kind of just leave that energy in the body, but then redirect it to something else? Like, because I came from a place which is has so much stagnation. Now things are kind of starting to be more you know, bubbly, but it's still the core questions of the inequality, the, st the theft, the, the base, you know, the racism, the, eth the ethno-nationalist kind of framework, uh, the supremacy, all these things that are, are very much shared in the US, those are, haven't been, those, those are, I think, are the core and the, and the kind of place for a new political imagination. So I think there was something where I was like, what if we just take that messianic thing? What if we just take that zeal and re- put it in a body that has almost been asleep. And, you know, it's a work with a lot of questions. It was created in a specific time. Now I still work with these, you know, uh, I still work with these voices. I still think it's, I have access to them. I think I need to, as an Israeli, ask what those voices are, um, what they do. Um, but I also am constantly thinking, how do I undo them? How do I not only demonize, you know, that, but how do I think about these things in a very not in a personal way these are the like this is the founding myths of our nations so how do we take that and really uh, you know kind of deal, deal with it and then as you know Idris was saying and Paul like how then we really radically just redistribute resources opportunities through education through art like those are things I really like that you said Idris that construct construction are imagined before they sorry that construction are mad I imagine before they are built like I think really kind of going through the process I think in art thinking about the process of construction and visualizing it and how our own psyche is constantly being constructed um, as, a, as a playful material is something that again without demonizing because I don't I think it doesn't help if we're going to polarize one group against the other but I was like, what if as liberals, we kind of take on that place and see it within ourselves? Uh, and everyone can choose differently and kind of think about what that means, not in an any like moralist kind of way, but in a space for experimentation. 
Yeah, the reason why I asked because I like in this great seal how you how you penetrate the subculture of uh, political perform performativity and how you work with this aspect. And I think that uh, like when you put uh, when you put individuals uh, to experience it through their body, I think that's kind of gain the the highest agency of the of the art. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions, maybe um, from wise men uh, or comments? I have a question to Idris. I think because... Boris wanted to say oh, something. Okay, okay. I will, I will hold on. Boris? I was actually going to say that we are already over time. <laughs> Be, being okay, on this yeah, institutional... You're very up one, right? Yeah, sorry? No, I mean, you come up with a certain optimism and a good message. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very optimistic message. We actually have time boundaries on this thing. I, I did want to ask the, the uh, artists in, on the team, um, how do you think about, and probably Stephen too, uh, how do you think about the actual potential of your works to do the change. Uh, do you think about it as a real possibility or you prefer not to think about it? Do you think about how do you actually gauge the change that is made? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ju jump in just, sorry, you just, cause I have to go to in about two minutes. Um, so I'm gonna bow out. Um, I think that is the big question. And it really has to do with how you think about what your impact is. Impact can be very immediate the projects I'm working on, we want very immediate impact, but it can also be a redistribution of the sensible, fundamentally altering the ways we look at reality, which you can't actually measure the impact of because if we've actually gotten to that place, all our measurement tools are no longer useful. But to me, because I'm actually very interested in this notion of how do we do this sort of assessment, it really comes down to what does the artist want to do? You can't bring an assessment from the outside. It really has to do with what, and so when I work with artists, I ask them two questions. What do you want to do? And how will we know if we've done that? And that opens up the terrain, but it also brings a rigor and it demands a series of questions that artists need to ask themselves. What do I want to do? Who do I want to do it for? Um, and I think that actually makes for stronger, more impactful work. And I'm so sorry I have to go. I've got student meetings right now. Um, and so it was great to see all of you. And thank um, you for letting me be part of this. Likewise. Thank you very much for joining. It was Stephen. lovely working with you, Stephen, yeah. again. Good to see so, you. Thank so you. great to see your face. Thanks Bye -bye. a lot. So what uh, what uh, the comment of um, uh, or the answer of Stephen made me kind of still come back to my question to Idris about uh, uh, popular music and the political message embedded into this and maybe looking at the I'm also like a big fan of uh, lyrics of the uh, pop songs of the 90s I think they were very much charged. Uh, uh, charged with um, some reflection on uh, local and global processes. And I was um, uh, like, uh, before, before, we, uh, before the discussion, I was doing a workout and I was listening to this uh, song of Hadaway, uh, life, <laughs> life will never be again, life is changing. So uh, thinking about these lyrics of uh, 1993, I was thinking that maybe you can uh, uh, sort of uh, give us some, some uh, recap about the, um, uh, political message of this huge um, platform as uh, uh, pop songs and hip hop. Uh, what is your take on that? What is your, uh, what it does actually? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, artists, I mean, this is a little bit to Boris's question too. I mean, you know, our job uh, is to reflect, you know, as, as we, we make we make things, we make reflections, we make opportunities for people to reflect and we document uh, the consciousness or the spirit of, of the society, you know? So, you know, immediately I think of Kendrick Lamar's, you know, we gonna be all right, which is this very clear anthem for the Black Lives Matter era. And for me, like if, if I had to pick one song to sort of define the last 10 years, I would pick that song. Um, but I also think about a, uh, that song uh, by Cardi B, 
uh, and Megan the Stallion WAP, right? Uh, which is a very perverse, uh, very racy song. Um, you know, a, a, an anthem to uh, the female anatomy uh, and 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 their sexuality, um, and in a but in a in a very but sort of using that sort of hyper exaggerated hyper um, uh, hyperbole that that sort of like street corner um, game of exaggeration that hip hop has a tradition into, which is really uh, about community. Ultimately, it's about an an insistence of of existence. Uh, in place. And I think um, that song to me is also very political and radical as well, because it, it sort of challenges respectability politics. And it also challenges, you know, the longstanding tradition of, of sort of like mostly male and, and heteronormative uh, narratives, right. And so to me, it's all political, it's all political, because it's just it's it's all reflections, it comes from somewhere, you know, so uh, as someone who loves music and, and loves art and all of that, I just I just view it through that prism. And, and so, you know, I just think change is is what it is, you know, we change our minds change our things change and the artists just reflect that change, we just reflect and document that change. So the art doesn't necessarily change a person people just change and we and we just we we're changing too the artists are changing the venues are changing the curators are changing you know what i'm saying so i i don't really see it as a, as a one plus one equals equals two kind of situation you know thank you i also wanted to uh input i think to this discussion i know we don't have that much time left but maybe it could be the last question or something to address, because um, we talk a lot about political imagination and the role of art, but I also wanted to talk about the role of freedom of speech and uh, role of media in, you know, mediating certain events and certain um, processes that are being hidden or maybe underrepresented. And in the situation, um, in the context of Turkey, like in, in many contexts, today, unfortunately, when media is being suppressed, um, and media is being manipulated and it's dangerous to be a journalist. What do you think are the um, strategies for maybe create, creating an alternative journalistic narrative or, or finding a way when you can still speak up and, and talk to people and address um, very important issues and still stay safe? Your microphone is off. Thank you very much. Actually, the strategy is in it because uh, uh, the, the thing is that the whole manipulation uh, regarding the political process, processes, democratic processes is very obvious. And Turkish society is a very political society. That's why uh, this uh, manipulation of uh, manipulation of effects, manipulation of emotions work too much, actually. Uh, so everybody knows what is going on, and that's why in the surveys, uh, even uh, made by ordered by the, the, the government, it is obvious that people do not use and do not trust uh, pro-government um, media outlets. Instead, they use uh, different different uh, channels like WhatsApp groups, Twitter, Facebook, social media, and so on. And there are still some journalists, um, not some actually, there are many journalists now establishing, uh, since years, establishing their own media outlets on uh, Twitter, on uh, like Mediascope, I'm also working for them, um, like uh, YouTube channels, podcast channels, and so on. There is a danger in a sort of turmoil. We know that the, the uh, ATP, the, the government, can control also internet connections because in, the, the owners of the internet connections, the, the internet companies, are also dependent on government through their economic investment, not because of the laws or legal infrastructure, but through their legal uh, the, their economic investments. So. Uh, it is it is like very uh, fragile. The alternative media scape is also very fragile. But it is that there is also a bright side uh, that um, you know in Turkey the, the media scape, the mainstream media scape, uh, scape was very uh, corrupted for years, for you know decades, let's say since the since 1980s, since the coup d'état happened in 1980. The, 
uh, media companies was very corrupted. The relationship, be uh, relationship between the media and governments are, were not very clear. Not everything is obvious. So people know that, uh, that uh, mainstream media uh, don't work. And that's why there is a new kind of uh, media atmosphere is created uh, by the oppositionary, by the, not opposition, not necessarily opposition, by independent um, uh, journalists and academics and so on. It is not enough. It is not enough, uh, enough, how, how, how to say, white, because there is no money, let's say. Uh, but by the time, if there is a change in the governmental structure, if there is a change, for example, in an election, it is coming, it seems, in uh, next year, there will be an early election uh, because, uh, because there, there's a, a new group of uh, voters. Uh, like they are, they are uh, very young. They, they, uh, they were born under the AKP hegemony, let's say, uh, so-called uh, Generation Z. And uh, it seems uh, Erdogan wants to make an election before they could uh, have the right to vote because it seems these guys don't believe him. These guys will not vote for him. And it is also about the mediascape too. That's why I wanted to put them because they are the ones uh, most unbelievers of Erdogan. So that's why there will be an election and we will see what is changing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I think also maybe Paul could add um, a little bit on this matter as um, you know, a person who who's been mediating um, news of, of the Indian community and um, uh, a person who um, is a producer for um, Indian Country TV, and um, I'm also I also think you uh, were running a, a radio station. So, um, how do this um, news and information is also kind of being reaching out to 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 smaller communities, and maybe how news of smaller communities reach out to people on on the country level. Uh, please turn on, yeah. Sorry. Well, um, news from Indian country, which has gone out of publication after 33 years, definitely served uh, a, a, a much smaller community than, than ever before uh, with news and information that they thought was necessary. That's why we evolved into Indian country TV, TV with websites, multiple websites, and all the other social media we have. Um, that's a reflection of what the native community wanted. They, they wanted their own voice. And that's where a lot of the organizing going, uh, is going on. When I came to La Couture uh, 50 years ago, uh, there was uh, nearly uh, no voters. And, and, and part of the right outreach in terms of giving people voice is something that encourages them to participate in the political, social, religious fabric, fabric of other parts of the community, uh, to be understood, uh, to have a seat at the table, uh, to, uh, I, wor I worked in the governor's office where we had 198 appointments to committees and commissions and other operations. We put uh, a Native American on every one of those commissions because they were viable. Whether it was the banking commission or the gay and lesbian uh, council or whatever it may be. Our publications of which there was at one time several hundred and there's there's only a, maybe a hundred left in Indian country, but they've gone to the online media are all having a tremendous impact on all levels of society, whether it's reflection of tribal courts, whether it's political exercise in political jurisdiction, education systems, owning radio stations and those kinds of things. So uh, the media plays a huge role in not only representing their community and giving voice to it, but having that mirror back, the reflection, how do, how do the tri what are the tribal communities reading if they don't trust some of the publications and media institutions around them, they're, they're not looking at that at all. And so they're not being fed good information as well. So there's, I think media has a big influence. I wanted to note one thing again about music and 
uh, politics and things like that. Uh, one of our artists that belonged to our board of directors for a while was NACO, N-A-H-K-O. Uh, look at a video if you can find it online called uh, Love Letters to God. Uh, it's generated uh, millions of views in the last year and a half since it's been produced and it's in opposition to to pipeline and in response to Dakota access situation. Very effective in bringing an emotional level to things that allows people to get their foot in the door to participate in other activities. And so music, uh, I mean, number one, you, you can't have a revolution without music. You can't have a revolution out without good food. You can't have a revolution without humor. All those elements have to be brought together by all the participants of all kinds of life to make it work. It's not just the front lines uh, that are operating that are gonna bring that change. It's gotta be everyone. And if, if you cook really good stuff, then cook good stuff and give it to people that need to be fed who can get out in the field. And with that, I have to leave. I have a line of about seven people here who have issues about voting today that I got to get back to. But thanks for the invitation and thanks for Thank the you. information. Thank you. Uh, good conversation. Maybe we can have another one on another day under a new administration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Paul, <laughs> Thank good you luck very much. Paul. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Good luck and we'll thanks continue so much. talking for sure. But I think uh, in uh, any case, we unfortunately have to, to finish. And uh, it was a very impressive and uh, very. Um, informative and um, two hours uh, of presentations. Yeah, and I think for me it was also important, you know, I kept thinking that it's a pity that we guys are not meeting offline because it would be great to see everyone's faces and just be in one room and share the energy. And uh, let's see, it's been a pretty difficult time for all of us, but uh, I, I feel like we all kind of remain hopeful and as, as, as long as we do, I think we, we still kind of stay strong. So let's stay strong, let's vote, and let's keep in touch. And thanks very much for this two and a half hours. Thank yeah, we can't, we, we can't allow to be pessimistic, guys. Uh, Boris, can you, can you say maybe any uh, last words? Uh, last words, thank you all so very much. And I hope to see you all in person at the Wiseman next year when we do get that huge grant. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> the money yeah. from politicians, we need to rechannel them. <laughs> yes, we need to redistribute exactly. the money and give that to artists, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so okay. much, it was amazing. So and much, uh, yeah, we'll put video online if you want to share it with, uh, with your colleagues, friends and uh, like-minded people. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.